Anytime any 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 problems with the fact that you are of Greek Australian background and the name was Marinos or Marinos or Marinopoulos. Less and, uh, so on stage, that tends to be a little more uh, forgiving in that way. Uh, television was <coughs> Pretty rigid in those days in, in the way it, uh, it perpetuated images of people. Stereotypes. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, and so I tended to be Greek or Italian mm. or Jewish or Spanish. They were all the same. You know, I mean, what it was, I was dark. You're right. And obviously not. Not blonde Australian and not, uh, not blue eyed. That's that right. Correct? That's right. I mean, I got cluey early on because I grew my hair very long, so it gave me a, a second area as a hippie. <laughs> that well, I there was play. a time, though, I think in your, in your life, in, and I read it somewhere in, in your brief, that you wanted to be the blonde, uh, the, the blue-eyed, blonde-haired, uh, stompy, sure. wompy, real gone surfer guy. Yes, I would have. Yes, I, I kept thinking you needed, that was the You ideal. needed that recognition or you needed that in sort those of days, In those days, it was, I mean, uh, more seriously now, it was, the emphasis was on assimilation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I felt foolishly because I was foolish that uh, I needed to be more Australian than the Australians and the way to do this obviously would have been to be blonde Was it a blue case eye. of being foolish or was it more a case of being young and being impressionable mm. and not knowing what you know uh, now? Well, not knowing what I know now but also I was foolish. Yeah. I mean, in, in retrospect, it's, you know, it's the way we, uh, we pressure kids with images that we perpetuate on TV or we, whatever. the media? Yeah, to become certain things that uh, that are perhaps unattainable for various reasons. Obviously, obviously being tall, blonde and blue-eyed is an unattainable image for me. For you yeah. and I. Yeah, yeah. Um, when there was a time that you said that you got into the television habit and you, you started to look and to stretch your, your goals, uh, was there one moment in that time that you said to yourself, well, I'd, I'm not just happy on stage. I want to be a director. Or that, did that again yes, come about was. by, by N chance? No, uh, n sort of by chance, but I, I could see that I'd been working towards it in the sense that although, although I'd been, uh, I suppose, more visibly on TV, to excuse the pun, uh, mm. most of my work had been in theatre. And uh, and it's, it's a lifestyle that uh, gets very tiring. It's hard to get it up eight times a week, you know, um, and six nights a week, and you, your only day off is Sunday, and you, you know, and that's when you do your washing, and it's just, it's just not such an attractive lifestyle. I mean, I love the theatre, but I couldn't. I knew that I couldn't go on working as an actor in theatre. I couldn't rehearse during the day and play at night, you know, perform. So at it was night. a case of we being the foolish ones, and you being the alert one, knowing that full well if you could still stay in the industry. But uh, if you became a director or someone behind the scene, you could have your day off as well. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, no that's, that's the great no thing. It's, it's nice you get a show on and you walk away. <laughs> um, you don't have to be there night after night. I mean, I'm, I miss performing. I right. miss the excitement of performing. Uh, Is that what keeps you going? Yes, I think so, yes. But also I knew that, that I mean, uh, to be honest about it, maybe I just wasn't a good enough actor as well to get, to get enough stimulating work. It tended to be work that I'd... Uh, I was starting, I could see myself falling into bad habits. I was doing performances that I was doing easily, you know, because the roles weren't extending me. Now, if I'd been a better actor, maybe I would have had larger roles that were more stimulating, who knows. Mm. And but I, more. I also was one of those loudmouth actors who said, why don't you do it this way? And so when the opportunity you always came had to something direct, to contribute. yeah, well, so I thought, you know, and when the opportunity came to direct, I thought, well, you know, this is where I put my money where my mouth is. 